Well, hello there, and this is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com. In this video, we're going to create a hub and spoke network topology in Microsoft Azure. We're going to do this using a new technology that Microsoft has deployed called Virtual Network Manager. It is in preview. It's a preview service, but we're going to use Virtual Network Manager to create the hub and spoke topology. Now, in the past, we could have created this as well, but it involved a lot of manual deployments and manual resources. Not only deploying the virtual networks themselves, but deploying uh, devices onto the network, deploying routing tables, having a device on the hub that could do the redirection so that the spokes could talk to each other, the VPN gateway so that you could connect from your on-premises network into this hub and spoke topology. Now, if you're not familiar, the hub and spoke topology, uh, the purpose is so that you can have multiple virtual networks that can communicate with each other, but they do not all have to be connected to every other network. You can sort of imagine if you've got five or 10 virtual networks, you end up like a spider's web of having all your network connectivity paths between your each of the networks and the nine other networks. This is not neat. It becomes complicated. Uh, figuring out what's going wrong when you are uh, diagnosing network connectivity problems also becomes more complicated. In the hub and spoke model, what you end up with is you end up with a central network that is like the traffic cop where all traffic travels from a spoke into this central network called the hub and then out to the destination network, which is also a spoke. So you've got basically uh, multiple spokes in one hub and all spokes are connected to the hub bi-directionally, but the spokes are not connected to each other. Now you might wonder, could the spokes then communicate with each other if they're not connected to each other? And the answer is yes. If you set this up properly, then you're going to be able to have the pass through so that any traffic from one spoke travels through the hub to the other spoke and the redirection happens so that the packet gets to its destination. And so we're gonna set this up in a secure manner. We're gonna use a VPN gateway so that we have this um, VPN connectivity into the network as well. Now, like I said, we're gonna use this virtual network manager service, it's brand new. So if you go into the Azure portal and you search for Virtual Network Manager, you might be taken to a screen like this, which lists them. We do not currently have one. It is an instance that needs to be deployed. And so we're gonna create ourselves an instance of the Virtual Network Manager. So I'm gonna to have to create a brand new resource group. I'm gonna call this uh, Hub Spoke Demo. You can call your resource group whatever you wish. The reason I create them in a resource group is it, it makes them very easy to delete them when I'm done with the demo. I'll also call the instance itself a hub spoke demo. And we're gonna deploy this in this particular case in the default, which is the East US region. So this is gonna be a hub and spoke demo. Now, when we get down to the second half of this creation page, it's called scope and features. Now, this is a decision you're making that cannot be updated once you've created the virtual network manager. You're going to have to then destroy it and recreate it if you want to change these options. Now, the scope is just as it sounds. Do we want this to be able to manage virtual networks across the entire subscription or do we want to limit the scope into a particular a resource group or we can even pick from a management group here. So I'm going to uh, select the Microsoft Azure sponsorship in this particular case as the scope. Again, we could choose management group to make a higher level scope. And in terms of features, we have two options for features. One is called connectivity. The other is called security admin. Connectivity allows you to create either mesh networks or hub and spoke model between virtual networks that are in this scope. The security admin is going to allow us to create security rules 
on that scope as well. So let's do both the creating of the network uh, connectivity as well as managing the security for that. We'll skip over to the review and create. Validation passed and I'm going to hit create. So we're going to let that run and uh, in, a, in a second this will get created and we can start to work with it. Now that was very fast. It took only a few seconds, four seconds to create this. Let's say go to resource and we can see that we have our virtual network manager ready to go. We're not going to use it just yet. What we have to do first is we're going to have to create some virtual networks. So if we go into create a resource and we enter virtual network, we can see the in the selection and we're going to go and create for the, this hub and spoke demo three virtual networks. Two of them are going to be the spokes and one of them is going to be the hub. So we'll create the uh, first one and we're going to put this into the hub and spoke demo just to keep them all together. And I'm going to call this uh, virtual network A. And since the hub and spoke, the network uh, managers in the East US, let's put this in uh, Canada Central. I mean, you can put that wherever you want, but we can, we, the man, it can manage networks that are not in the same region as it. For the IP addresses, what we want is not there to be overlap for our uh, virtual networks. In order to do network peering, we are going to have to set them up so that there's no overlap. So I'm going to choose the default here, which is in my case, 10.0.0.0.16, which is a, a full 65,000 IP addresses. And the default is a smaller range, only slash 24. We're not going to enable any of the um, security settings right now. And what we can do, we can create a tag here. Um, we can call this uh, network location, and this is going to be Canada. Okay. And review and create. And create. So now we're going to have to repeat this process to create two more uh, virtual networks. We're going to do everything um, uh, pretty much the same. So we'll go back. We can wait for the, we don't have to wait for the deployment to complete. And we're going to go back and say uh, virtual network, create, make sure it's in the right group. This is going to be a virtual network B. It's going to be in Canada. In my case, again, you can do this wherever you wish. We're going to make sure the IPs are not overlapping. So this is 10.1, not 10.0. So it isn't. And we're going to um, choose network location Canada. Okay. I'll show you why we're doing this tagging in a second. We're going to create some dynamic network groups. All right, so now we have uh, two networks, A and B. Let's go and create C. I'm also going to plate this in Canada. This is 10.2. This is also a location in Canada. Great. 
great. All right, so now we should have, if I go back to the dashboard into the Hub and Spoke demo resource group, we should have three virtual networks and the uh, virtual network manager. So this third one is still being created. There it is. I hit refresh. Now I've got three networks and virtual network manager. All right, so one thing I noticed here is that I have a one network, A, in Canada Central and the other two in Canada East. So that wasn't intentional, but it's gonna work out pretty good. That lets me know that I can put my hub here and my spokes in Canada East. And that would just be a good way to differentiate them. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy a virtual network gateway into the hub. So this would be the connectivity point if you're going to have a point to site or a site to site VPN coming into this network group, it's going to come into network A. And so let's uh, do that. We're gonna go into the dashboard, hit create, and we're gonna find the network gateway. And we're gonna choose this virtual network gateway. And we're gonna say create. So we've got our um, subscription. We are gonna to have to give it a name. So we'll call this a VNet A Gateway. I'm gonna put this in Canada Central, which is the same place as the virtual network. And we're gonna choose a, a VPN type gateway, not the express route, and it's gonna use the route-based VPN versus policy. Now, these are two uh, gateway types and it's gonna depend on your physical device. If you're connecting this to a site-to-site -site VPN, you might have an older one, which is policy-based. Think of this as being like the access control list style, whereas this modern one is route-based and that's what we're gonna choose. We're not doing an on-premises one for now, but it would depend on your actual device. Now we're not gonna use availability zones. We're gonna just choose the gateway one SKU, okay? First generation, and we're gonna choose our virtual network. We're gonna put this on network A because that's the network in Canada Central. So we um, are going to create a brand new subnet. So that we have the default subnet, and now we're gonna create a virtual network gateway subnet and that's going to be 10.0.1.0 so because we have a virtual network that's bigger than the subnet of default then we can um we can use that one all right we're going to use just a um a standard ip so an ip address will be assigned to this we're going to have to create a new one we'll call this uh, vnet what is this called? Vina Gateway IP. And we'll leave, we, we'll leave Active Active disabled. Active Active allows you to have dual channels between your gateway device and your virtual network gateway, both active, as opposed to being an active and a backup, right? There's the active passive mode, which is, um, has only one channel that's really active and the other channel just standing there in case of emergency. We're also gonna use the border gateway protocol. We'll leave that all disabled. Now we can say review and create. And this will create a virtual network gateway onto our VNet A. Um, this is gonna take a while, so I'm not going to be able to we're gonna let that run and we'll continue on uh, creating the hub and spoke for the virtual networks. And hopefully this will uh, be done in the time that we're going to uh, see it again. All right, so some time has passed and the virtual network gateway has been created. And so what we can do is go into the network manager resource 
And we can look at, the first thing we're gonna look at is called a network group. So we're going to create a network group to group some networks together that we can manage them together. Now in this case, we only have two groups, right? Uh, two networks, the network B and network C. So this is B network B and C. So we'll create an empty group. It's created immediately. And when I go into it, the group itself has no members. And we have two options for adding networks to our network group. Now, one option is the Azure policy. Now, this is a dynamically generated um, and managed list of members. And so I can create a set of rules. If I go into the policy tab here and call this rule, create a set of rules based on the name of the network, the ID or tags, the subscription name or ID or tags, or the resource group name. So for instance, uh, I can say this resource group of HubSpoke demo, I could basically automatically add all of the virtual networks of HubSpoke demo into this network, um, network group. Now I'm not going to do that for a couple of reasons. One is we don't want the hub to be part of this. We want only the spokes. And two, um, doing this is very inefficient. It could take up to 24 hours for this to run. And um, we just don't have that kind of time to demonstrate this. But uh, if you do want a group that's all, the members are gonna be added and subtracted based on tags or names or things like that, dynamic membership, this is the way. I'm gonna cancel that. We're gonna add the virtual networks manually. And so remember, virtual network B and virtual network C are the spokes in our hub spoke model. And so I manually add them to the group. If I click on group members, I can see B and C have been manually added to the group. Let's go back up to the network manager side and we're gonna go into configurations. So remember when we created this network manager, we had two options, one for connectivity and the other was for security and we chose both. So what we're gonna deal with in this um, part is called connectivity configuration. So we do need to give our connectivity configuration a name. And so I'm gonna call this hub spoke model. And let's go on to the topology screen. And we can see that there are two topologies currently supported. One is a mesh network, which is peerings between all of the virtual networks. So A to B, B to C, C to B, C to A, etc. Or the other is a hub and spoke model where there's only one at the center and all the spokes connect to the one. First thing we need to do is we need to select who is gonna be the hub. In our example, virtual network A is the hub. Now, right away, I can see there's a problem because we know for a fact that Virtual Network A has a network gateway attached to it, a gateway subnet and a running gateway. Um, but right now this says, no, it does not. I'm gonna continue even with this, uh, what could be a lag or a delay or something like that. So the hub is Network A. Next up, we need to add the subnets. Now we have this uh, network group called two networks. And so that is going to be our spokes. Now we can uh, click here to enable connectivity within the network group, which will allow the spokes to talk to each other. So this is basically the routing element of the um, hub and spoke model. So we can see there, we got our hub and spoke model connectivity. It's a hub and spoke topology with network A as the hub and two networks as the spokes. So now I can click create. Now what we're doing right now is just creating the configuration 
So we can see that this configuration has been set up. So I'm going to go into the deployments section. We haven't deployed any of the configurations yet. So I'm going to click deploy configuration. We're going to choose that the, the configuration we just created. The, we're going to choose the regions. So in this particular case, it is Canada Central and Canada East that are going to be affected by this deployment. We do not currently have any uh, network configurations set up and we're going to be deploying the hub and spoke model configuration to both regions. Remember the hub is in central and the spokes are in east. So I'm going to click deploy. So now we're waiting for these networks to be configured in that hub and spoke model. Once we refresh this deployment, we can see that the configuration has been deployed. Now I will mention it's not part of what I was going to talk about today, but with the security configuration, this is where we can set up some network security group NSG rules that are going to be deployed to these networks. So if we want to say that we're going to allow traffic inbound on port 80 and port 443, for example, you can set up that rules within security configuration and then deploy the security configuration to those regions. Now we can talk about how we're going to test this. So we are going to need to make a virtual machine in order to a test connectivity. So I'm going to deploy a virtual machine to the default subnet of virtual network A. And then we can look at the networkivity connectivity from the machine running on that network. So I'll just do that quickly. Go into a, on a Windows a virtual machine. Put it into the demo, call it VM999. We might as well put it into uh, Canada Central where the hub is. We want no redundancy. It doesn't have to be a big machine, B2MS is just fine. and the password. We don't really need to be able to RDP into this machine. We're going to be using the portal to check the connectivity. So I'm going to turn that off. We'll set the defaults. I do want this on virtual network A in the default subnet. And so that is a correct location. I don't turn on boot diagnostics when I create VMs. So we're going to create this virtual machine. Let that run. All right, so let's go to this virtual machine. And all we're concerned with at this point is the networking section. So you know with virtual machines, you have the machine itself and then you have the network interface card that handles the networking. And so we're interested in this network interface card. Now, if we had any of security configuration deployed, like the allowing port 80 and 443, they would show up in this section here. 
But in our case, we want to skip over to the network interface card itself. And if we scroll down under the help section, we can see this concept saying effective routes. So effective routes is where the peering relationships are going to show up. Remember, we have a virtual machine that is inside the hub right now. This is the hub, 10.0.0.0 is the uh, hub, virtual network A. And if we look at other addresses it's connected to, it's connected to 10.1 and 10.2, which are the spokes of the uh, spoke and hub model. So we are now from this virtual machine, we can connect to any machine that's running in either of these two networks. Now, if we flip back into the virtual network level itself, we should be able to go under the peerings section and see that there is a peering relationship between network B and network C. And so we can, we can confirm now that the network manager, the virtual network manager service that we had to create an instance of was successfully able to create a hub and spoke network for us given the networks that were already created. And we can pretty much confirm that the connectivity is there for that model. So in uh, 2022 and beyond, this is how you create a hub and spoke model or a mesh network in Microsoft Azure. This has been Scott Duffy from getcloudskills.com. If you are looking for some labs to practice your exam skills, Come on over to getcloudskills.com where you'll find uh, basically each of the major Azure exams, certification exams from AZ900, AZ104, the uh, 305 exam now, 204, the new 800 and 801 ones, or which is probably the best deal is an all labs option. All labs gives you access to over 700 Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS labs that include not only the certifications, but Linux security and gives you 12 months of access to an Azure account to practice this with. So you don't need to use your pay as you go. You don't need to use your company account. The free account only lasts for 30 days. This comes with 12 months of access and over 700 uh, labs. Now, what is a lab? A lab is basically instructions that you can follow. It's a challenge that you can follow to see how good you are with Azure. Some of them are quite easy and some of them are quite advanced. And so obviously as you go up the difficulty scale, you should expect less handholding um, as you go along. But you can see a pretty typical lab here with instructions on the right and the ability to check if you create the uh, application security group, associate that to the network interface and um, set up the correct incoming security rule and you hit the check button, it would give you three green check marks. But if you didn't do one of the instructions, you're gonna have to go back here into a real Azure environment and change something to make this green again. So this is hands-on work within Azure. Again, it covers uh, almost all of the main Azure exam skill sets or the best value I believe is one year of access to all the labs and you can just power through uh, all of the Azure exams, AWS exams, uh, PowerShell, Linux, cybersecurity, lots of stuff if you dedicate yourself to this. Thanks for watching this. This has been Scott Duffy. If I can help you learn Azure in any way, I appreciate it. Leave a comment below and uh, I can hopefully answer your questions. Thanks a lot.